Hi, my name's Andy, and this is part 11 of my first Raspberry Pi game where we uh, write your first ever computer program uh, using your Raspberry Pi or any other Linux computer. Um, uh, it's been a long series. Um, uh, I've been trying to cover things um, completely with, with no uh, knowledge required except how to use a computer and type stuff in. Uh, this one is part 11, and I, I'm pretty sure there are only going to be 12 parts, so if you've got this far, well done. Uh, stick with it. Um, we're going to do something uh, that we need to do this week, and then next week we're going to make it into more of a game rather than just a sort of one round of a game. And hopefully, um, we'll be finished. We'll have a proper game that you can play and show your friends. Okay, so do check out the blog post. Um, that you can find on artificialworlds.net. It's got everything I'm going to say today written on there in a way that might be easy to understand. It's also got uh, my version that you can click through to and compare against what you've got. So let's jump back onto the Pi. Here's our program that we've written so far called redgreen.py. Um, we're writing a game that um, either shows a red circle and you have to quickly press a key or it shows you a... Uh, sorry, did I say a red circle? It shows you a green circle and you have to press a key. Uh, or it shows you a uh, red square and you have to not touch anything. Um, and you lose points if you press on red and you lose points if you, you get points if you press on green. Um, okay, so let's jump in. So what we're going to do today um, is we're going to fix up a problem that our program's got, which is that there are quite a lot of times where you can't exit. Um, the, the program's waiting for something to happen and it's not listening to what keys you're pressing on the keyboard. Um, so we need to tidy that up. It, it sounds boring, but we're going to be covering um, quite a lot of um, uh, things that you need to do when you're writing code that hopefully will help you learn for your next project you're going to do. You're going to need to do similar things. So uh, first thing we're going to do is um, instead of uh, only listening to one type of quit event, that is um, uh, there's only one way of getting out of the program, which is closing the window in the top right, um, we're going to make that uh, a little bit more general so there are other ways of quitting. The particularly useful thing about this is that when, if the game was running um, in full screen, um, not just maximized, but full screen so that uh, you can't even see the surroundings of the window, which most games often, lots of games run in that mode, um, you won't be able to close the window by clicking the top left, so you need another way of doing it. And the way I think we should do it uh, is letting you press escape as well, but there may possibly be other ways. If you're running on a different device, maybe you press, uh, if that device has a start button or something, maybe you press that. But anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go and find the shape weight function. Um, and in this shape weight function, we've got this little piece of code here. Let me change it so you can see the whole of it. Got this bit of code here that says uh, if uh, if the event that we're talking about, because at the moment we're in a loop where we're waiting, seeing what events happen. Events are things like keys getting pressed, windows getting closed, things like that. And we're saying if the type of event that we're seeing, that's what event dot type means, is this quit type, which means basically someone closed the window by clicking in the top right, then we quit. So what I want to do is make this more flexible. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of refactoring. Um, uh, by which I mean changing how the program works without changing anything it does at all, changing its behavior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an isQuit function up here. So I'm going to say make a new function by typing def, give it a name which is isQuit, and it's going to take in an argument called EVT, which means event. So what what this function is is a way of asking um, is this event that we're passing into you uh, something which should make us quit? So the answer we're using at the moment is exactly this piece of code down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of code away by cutting it and I'm going to paste it into this new function. One, two, three, four. Four spaces for anything that's inside something else. And then I'm going to paste what I just cut but that's no good, I need a return. So what I'm saying is, this this function just gives you back the answer. Is this event a quit event? And the answer is, if if it's uh, pygame.quit, as in they close the window, then the answer is yes. So this will return true because this expression becomes uh, the value true and then gets returned by the return statement. 
So to leave our code the same as it was before, we need to call this function in the place where we used to have that bit of code. So we're going to say is quit, and then the event that we're interested in is also called EVT here, which is a coincidence. Um, and what we've done is um, left our code exactly as it was before in terms of behavior, but we've made it more flexible to uh, support what we're going to do next. So um, before we do anything else, let's just check that we haven't completely broken it, made a mistake by running the program and seeing whether we see any errors. So to run the program, we type dot slash red green dot high, because that's its name. And we run it. And it runs just as before. And we can close the window by pressing the X in the top right. So that works too. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make this function cleverer, which is the reason behind what everything we're doing here. So instead of just returning the answer, is this event um, someone closing the window by clicking in the top right, we're going to ask a more complicated question. That question is going to take uh, a few lines. It's one uh, logical line of code. So it's one piece of logic. Um, but in, on the screen here, it's going to take several lines. So the best way in Python to let Python know uh, not to stop looking and keep on looking at this line um, is to make an open bracket, put your stuff on the next line or wherever you want it, and then when you've finished, put a, a closed bracket at the end. So, so far, I, again, I haven't changed the program at all. I've just added some brackets, but now I'm really going to change it. And what I'm going to say is I want either this thing, which is closing the window because you clicked in the top right, or something else. And the other thing I want, I'm going to line it up like this because it just makes me happy. The other possibility I want is uh, that you press the escape key, which is in the top left. On most keyboards, it says ESC on it. Um, it just seems a reasonable way to quit. Lots of programs let you press escape to quit. So what we want to know um, is not just the type of the event, because uh, it will be a key press, but also which key you press. So there's two things we need to say, and they both need to be true for us to want to quit. So the first thing is, is it a key press event? So I'm going to say event dot type equals polygon dot key down. But also, I'm typing this and, which means it might have to be two two things have to be true at the same time for this to come back as true. So. The other thing is, the key that you pressed has to be highgame.k under escape. So this um, k underscore escape um, is Pygame's way. It has, Pygame has um, uh, a number in it that represents each key on the keyboard. And they all start with k underscore and then the name of the key. So if it was the a key, that would just be k underscore a, I think. Um, but the escape key has this special name, escape. So what we're saying in this whole expression is there are two reasons why we will say that is quit returns true, i.e. there's two reasons why we would quit. Either this part is true, which means that they clicked the X in the top right, or, and that's what this or means, or the whole of this is true, and the whole of this means the type of the event was a key press, and, and that's what and is doing there, and the key that was pressed is the escape key. So now we should be able to quit out of the game by pressing escape. I think we'd better try that. So save it again. Go back to LX Terminal where we're running our program from. Press the up arrow and then return to get the same command as last time. Run it. And then when we get to the shape weight screen, press escape. And it quits. So it works. Okay, so that was quite um, simple. Um, that means that we can quit uh, even if we're in full screen mode. So the next bit of politeness that we need is um, allowing you to quit even at times when at the moment it doesn't work. So, for example, when it says ready at the beginning, at the moment you can't quit during that. We want you to be able to quit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the shape weight function, which has been useful, but it's only... Um, it's only useful in one context, and we're going to make it into something that is much more useful uh, in a much wider set of contexts. So, first thing to do is some refactoring, so we won't change it at all. We're just going to change its name. We're going to change its name. Oh, no, we're not. We're going we're gonna to make another function that's got most of this function in it. So, 
I'm just reading my instructions. So go up to before the start, and make a new function called timed wait. And actually, timed wait is going to be exactly all the stuff that was in shape wait. Okay, so we're just going to select all of this stuff, cut it, paste it up here. So now, timed wait is exactly what shape wait used to be, except I left in the description of shape wait here because that's still that's going to remain true about shape weight. We're going to call timed wait here. Oh no! <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's not quite right. We need to return the answer as well. So shape weight returns an answer. If we're going to call timed weight inside there, we need to return the answer from shape weight that comes back from timed weight. So that's why we need the return. Um, and our program should work exactly the way it worked before. I'll just save. We'll have one more go. I won't do this every time. It will take all day, but um, let's do it this time. So shape weight should be working exactly as it did before. Um, the program seems to be working. So um, again, we haven't changed anything at all. So why did we do this? Well, the reason why we did it is because we want timed wait to be useful for lots of other things as well. So what we're going to say is instead of uh, just calling timed wait and giving no arguments, we're going to tell timed wait how long we want it to wait for and which events we want it to wait, um, which events might will stop it from waiting. So in the case where we're waiting for um, the user to press a key, the player to press a key when there's a green or red on the screen, which is what shape wait is for, then the events that we are interested in, we will stop waiting if these things happen. Those things are anything where you press a key, or anything where you press a mouse button. So there's two types of thing that we care about happening. Either the key got pressed, or the mouse got clicked. We want to wait for two seconds, which is written as 2,000 milliseconds. Um, and those are the events we're interested in. So we want to change time to wait. We haven't done it yet, but we're going to change time to wait so that it can take in these two arguments. How long to wait and which things we care about, which events we're going to, are going to stop us waiting. And I'm just going to add a comment here. Because whenever I write a number of milliseconds, I find it confusing. So I always want a comment, which is what this bit is just a comment written to me. The computer ignores it, uh, just telling me how long. I mean when I say 2,000, so here, two seconds. So what we've done is we've optimistically assumed that timed wait has been changed to work like this, even though it hasn't yet, and now we're going to go up and do that. So let's go back to timed wait. And we're going to make it take two arguments. And what we're going to do is we're going to be a bit clever. We're going to name these arguments the same as some variables that were actually already created inside the function. So time to wait used to be a variable that we created inside, but I'm just going to delete that line because now something with the same name, time to wait, is going to be passed in as an argument to the function. And the other argument is going to be event types that cancel. And previously on the next line here is where we created that event types that cancel variable, but now we can delete it, because instead of creating it there, we're passing it in as an argument to the function. And you'll notice that the two things we passed in, 2000 and key press or mouse button, are exactly what we used to be uh, set up as the answer in here. So again, we haven't actually changed anything the program does by making this change. It's just that instead of creating them as variables around here, we're passing them in as an argument here. And if I look back at where we passed them in, we're passing in the same values that were used before, because that press events is actually key down or mouse press, mouse button. So again, we haven't changed anything. Save it. Uh, again, we could try this out and uh, it would work the same as before. I'm going to skip that. I'll be here all day. Um, and then the other thing I want to do while we're here is I'm going to copy and paste from a screen you can't see um, a little bit of description of what this function does. Whoops, see what happened there. <laughs> I can't do that. 
I can't copy and paste into here from there, I'm going to type it. So wait for time to wait, but cancel if the relevant <laughs> event happens. We'll just describe a bit about what we pass back as the answer. Return true if cancelled or false if we waited the full time. So let me scroll so you can see it. That's just a description of what of what we're doing. And um and what all it says is um wait for this amount of time, cancel if one of these things happens and return true a different answer depending on which one happened. Either you waited the full time or you didn't. Okay, so um again the program's doing exactly what it used to do, but um uh <coughs> but it's structured in a different way that means we can reuse this timed wait function um for something else, which we will do in a minute. Just before we do that, we've got one other change we're going to make, which um, I'm not going to explain too much. Uh, you can go off and, and read about it if you want to. But basically, um, there's this thing in Python and in quite a lot of languages called exceptions. And basically what that means is if something you didn't expect to happen, happens, uh, the program stops running normally. You know, we've, all, we've been used to the program going down, 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 line by line jumping back up when you've got a loop or something like that, but just going round and round, moving down line by line. What an exception does is it changes that. If something unexpected happens, uh, the, the word, the phrase that's used is that an exception gets thrown, and what that means is that the program stops running line by line, and instead it jumps out to um, somewhere where it's come from a long time ago, um, and there's some code there which deals with that exception. Or if you don't write code to deal with the exception, you end up uh, with the program finishing and it prints out a message saying there was an exception. So I'm not going to say any more about exceptions, you can go and look that up and find out about it. But in order to make this program um, deal in a reasonable way with exceptions, I need to be polite about the fact that I've set a timer. So if, I, if we look at this code here, we set a timer event that's going to fire later, and we tell it when it's going to event and so on, when it's going to fire and so on. Um, and then we cancel that timer. and Really, um, that's fine because that will get cancelled at the end if it hasn't already expired, um, unless an exception happened. And I, I don't want to be rude, so rude that an exception might happen and then later on this event might suddenly pop up. That just seems uh, awful to me. So the way we avoid that is we can put the code that might throw an exception um, inside its own block. And then what we can say is we can say, uh, even if an exception gets thrown during this block of code, um, I still want you to do something, and uh, hopefully that will become clear in a second. So, the block you put it in is called try, and we need to indent everything by one more than it was before. I'm just pasting some spaces in here. You could type them manually if you want to. So everything within here... Whoops. Everything inside this try block, um, it operates exactly as it did before. But if an exception happens, we're going to jump out of this code. But, but all we're saying by finally is, before you jump out of this whole function and go back out to wherever you want to go, do something first. And what we want you to do is to cancel the timer. So this finally block means... Either you get to the end in the normal way, if you get to the end of this block of code in the normal way, run this code. Or if an exception gets thrown and you're jumping out to somewhere else, still run this code. But it won't run this code in that case, because the exception will shoot out and stop us doing the normal thing that we're doing. So this finally is just a way of guaranteeing something's going to happen, even if uh, something unexpected happens in the meantime and we're, we're going off to an error handling bit of code. So don't worry too much about that, just copy what I've done, or even don't if you don't care. Um, but it, uh, thinking about what might happen if an exception has been thrown is something that um, uh, you need to do when you're programming. It's one of the hardest things to do. And trying to give guarantees about it is extremely hard. Okay, so where have we got to? Um, 
Now we're being a bit more polite about what happens when something goes wrong. So let's go and uh, start using our timed wait function in a few other places um, where we can improve our behavior by using timed wait instead of having our own code. So let's find the function that we just called wait. So just a reminder before we get into this, the whole structure of our program, if we look right at the bottom, the whole structure is uh, we start, we display the screen saying get ready, then we uh, wait for a certain amount of time, display a shape, and then finish. And the shape wait function that we've been looking at is inside shape. So actually before we get into any of that, we've got this wait, which waits for a random amount of time, showing the ready screen, and then the shape gets displayed. So let's have a look at this wait function, because at the moment you can't quit while that wait is going on. So while the ready, um, the word ready is on the screen, uh, you can't close the window, you can't quit out, and it's very rude. And the reason for that is that we're calling this function called pygame.time.wait, and that doesn't, no events happen while you're doing that, it just waits. And you'll notice we've even written a comment here saying you can't quit during this, because we knew this was a problem. What we can do is we can fix this problem right now by using our time to wait function. So our time to wait function is all ready to use. So we're going to call it time to wait. We're going to pass in how long we want to wait for, which is precisely time to wait, which is this thing we calculated up here. It's a, whoops, a thing we calculated here, which is a random number. So instead of two seconds like we were doing before, the reason why we made this an argument to time to wait is so that we can use it with different times. And the time we're passing in here is this random amount of time. And the other argument we have to give to time to wait is which events do we care about that are going to stop us from waiting. Now, time to wait will always stop if you quit by closing the window or pressing escape, so we don't have to worry about that. That's already in place. Um, what we care about is anything else that you might want to stop for. So in the, in the case we were in before with the shape wait function, we cared about any key presses or mouse buttons. They were going to make us stop. Um, in this case, we don't want anything to make us stop except quitting. So what we do, we want to pass in an empty list of things, a list with no items in it. And in Python, the way you make an empty list is this, bracket, bracket. And then we close the bracket, which is the which matches the beginning of the time to wait. So what we're saying is wait for this amount of time, which is this random number we've calculated, and and if any of these events happen, then quit early. So basically, never quit early. We're passing in an empty list. So what that means is we can get rid of line 73 now. Instead of instead of using that um, uh, time dot wait function, we're calling our own function called called timed wait. And that behaves better, so um, we're being more polite. Let's just try that out. So save the program, go back to LX Terminal, run the program, and I'm going to try and immediately quit when the ready screen appears. It used to it used to not let us do that, now it should. And it does, so it's already become more polite. We're already doing well. Uh, okay, what should we do next? Um, just before we do anything else, um, we're going to reuse that list of events, the mouse press or the key press or the mouse button press um, events. So we're going to, there's going to be quite a lot of pieces of code that all want to use this variable here called press events. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the shape weight function where it can only be used there. I'm going to put it at the top so it could be used by lots of different pieces of our code. So I've just done a cut. I'll go right up to the top just after some of our other global variables. Global just means visible in lots of places. Um, I'm going to put it there. So There's this thing called press events, which is um, key press or mouse press. And now we can use press events in some other places, which we're, we're going to do. Um, and one of the places we can use it is inside shape weight, where we got it from. So we don't need to change shape weight any more than that. Let's have a look at that. So if we look back at shape weight, Hang on, have I missed it? Yeah, if we look at shape weight, it's using press events, but press events is already visible to it because we made it up at the top. Okay, so we're going to use time to wait in a few more places, and we're going to use press events as an argument to time to wait. So um, the first place we'll look at is the end function, which happens right at the end, which just says thank you for playing, uh, and then it waits. And what we've done is we've written quite a lot of code here. Um, to say, um, don't do anything, 
uh, until uh, the user presses the key or closes the window, until the player presses the key or closes the window. Um, so actually, this whole block of code that we've written here can just be replaced by a call to timed wait. So timed wait is able to do exactly the same thing as what we've written there without us having to write the code again. So this list of events that cancel is actually the same list as before, so we can just use press events and pass that into timed, event, timed wait. And the other thing I've done here is I've been a bit clever. I've passed in a zero, which means, um, which I happen to know means that it will wait forever. So this piece of code here waits forever. Um, so what I've said to timed wait is pass in zero, which means wait forever, and pass in this list key down and mouse button um, to say that those are the things that make you stop waiting. Um, so I've, I've done something equivalent. Now the, the question that may remain in your mind is why does passing in a wait time of zero, i.e. don't wait at all, actually wait forever? And the answer is slightly subtle, so let's have a look. Let's go back and find timed wait. I'm getting bored of scrolling around and looking silly, so... Whoops. So let's use the find function. There we go. Oh, that's good, wasn't it? So, uh, don't worry about the yellow, that's just um, leaf pad highlighting the thing I searched for. Um, so the reason why, if you pass in a zero here, saying wait for zero milliseconds, the reason why that waits forever is a bit subtle. What it is, is this line here, where we set a timer, um, we give the ID of the timer that we're interested in, and then we give the time to wait until the timer fires. But the set timer function, if you pass in zero as the time to wait, doesn't wait at all. It doesn't even set up the timer. In fact, it cancels the timer if it exists. But if the timer doesn't exist, it doesn't do anything at all. So, if we pass in zero here, it passes in zero here, no timer event gets created at all. So this, uh, this part will never happen. And when we cancel the timer, which you'll notice we do by passing in zero, um, nothing happens because there's nothing to cancel. And that's fine. It doesn't mind that at all. So that's why passing in zero to timed wait uh, makes us wait forever. Okay, so more places where we can reuse this timed wait function. So we've used it in shape wait, we've used it in end, but the other place we can use it is when you've either won or lost by pressing a key or not pressing a key. At the moment, we've got this bug. Um, we've written a comment about it saying you can't quit or skip. Well, let's fix it. So we call timed wait. We pass in 2,000 milliseconds. We pass in the standard list of um, events, which is press events, which we defined right at the top. And we add a comment saying you, that you wait for two seconds. And when we can delete uh, the way we used to wait, because we've got a better way of waiting now. And what I'm going to do copy that code because we're going to use it in a few other places. So previously we used pygame.time.wait. Now we can do it a better way, still wait the same amount of time, but this time there's various key presses you can use to stop waiting and also quitting works. So we're actually making our program a little bit better. If you get bored watching that success screen or that failure screen, you can now press a key to skip through it, and that's that's what this press event is doing. It's passing in a list of things that make it stop. Um, so four places, these four functions, green success, green failure, red success, red failure, which uh, previously did a, a rude way of waiting, now do the polite way. Um, and in a minute we'll try that out, make sure it works. Just before we do that, there's a bug um, that we need to fix. So have a look at... Uh, the function green shape. There's a place here where I just made a typo. So I meant that the radius of the circle should be a third of the screen's height, and I typed get width. So if we change this to get height instead of get width, um, the circle should be a bit smaller, and I think it looks a bit nicer. So let, let's do all those fixes, try it out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running the program and then quitting at various times and checking that it works. So first thing, we've already seen, oh dear, got a bug, okay. Uh, I think I mistyped. So let's go to the top of the program. 
I think I typed mouse button when I meant mouse button down. So let's see what happened there. Um, let's move that so you can see it. So we ran it and it says on line 10 of redgreen.py um, this is the line that says module has no attribute mouse button. So the module is pygame and then the dot means look inside pygame for something called mouse button and what it's saying is there is no thing called mouse button. And the reason why is because I typed it wrong. It should be called mouse button down. So now I've typed mouse button down. I've saved it. Let's see whether I've fixed my problem. I have. Good. Okay. So we've already seen we can quit from the ready screen. We can press a key on there and it says well done. And we can then quit. Oh, and I didn't do that quickly enough. On the success screen where it says well done, I want to quit. So that's the failure screen, but same applies. I've managed to quit from inside there. The other thing I want to show you is that we're now allowed to press a key on that success screen, and it skips through and does the next thing straight away. So press the thing. And we're too bored, so we we skip straight out of the success screen, go to the end. Notice now we're on we're on the end uh, page where it says thanks for playing, and it waits forever because we passed in that zero. That's what I was trying to explain earlier. So well done. Uh, if you followed all that, you've got a game which is uh, pretty much finished, except it only does it once. Uh, and in the next session, we're going to make it do it lots of times um, and tell you your score at the end. So um, I'll see you then for what I hope is the final episode of the series. Bye.